Hello everybody, welcome to the Tiny Nature Channel. Um, I got a video that's actually, this is um, a bit of an old footage. I'm just uploading this because this was a, one of the first things I filmed. I do apologize, the quality of video isn't perfect. So anyway, let's get right to it because I, I, speed, I sped up this, this bit of the video just to get, get bored and stuff. So I'm basically doing an enclosure for an um, Ephmostic mustiganopodus and um, which is a centipede and um, I got five of those so I'm gonna do five exactly the same enclosures I only got one on video though I'm just gonna put some gravel on the bottom and then I'm adding a pre-cut circle of um, a window mesh and then what I'm doing there is I'm mixing um, I mixed a bit of substrate with a little bit of sand um, just like so compact a little bit more I think it makes it better for them to burrow and uh, e tricks definitely love to burrow so I'm only gonna show one of the enclosures, um, you know, setting up because they're all pretty much the same. Um, at the time I made this video, I did use wood as the hide, like these, these, um, like a bit of wood bark. I have since changed it to um, to cork bark because you know it's just a lot better. It's getting moldy, doesn't have any problems or anything. I think one of them was actually starting to get moldy. One of the woods, one. Anyway, I replaced all. All of them in all my enclosures by cork bark, uh, for cork bark. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm just uh, like compacting the substrate a little bit so it will be easy for them to burrow. I just want it to be compact enough, not too much, but compact enough so that they can, you know, actually build tunnels and all that. Uh, this was actually these were the first centipedes I've got. Um, I got these from Bugs UK. Uh, they're all things, you know, they're all babies. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, also going to add, um, I didn't do it at the time, I think, but I'll be adding some, some sphagnum moss to, to the enclosure. A little bit more. I mean, E-Triggs don't need a crazy amount of humidity. She's in the mid-ranges, so... And temperature is the same thing. I mean, they do come from Nigeria, so it's not exactly a cold country in a high humidity country. Um, but regardless, they do need some humidity because, well, centipedes cannot retain humidity as like insects and and some arachnids and all that. So they do need to have that humidity available because they can't really retain it. Something to do with a layer, protective layer that centipedes don't have compared to the other, um, well, I was going to say other insects, but centipedes are not insects, but yeah, compared to other inverts, they do not possess this, so it's a little bit complicated. Um, also, I do apologize about the video, you can't really see it properly right here because, honestly, I got that black background because whenever I like do springtail stuff like that, it's easier to spot if it's against a black background, so that's why I have that black bit of cardboard on there. It's not really great for this as you can't really see the substrate but you know, I'm just basically like patting it down and making sure it you know that it's all good and everything and it's all set up for her to burrow. Now as you've probably noticed I have more centipedes than any other type of, of exotic um, pet or invertebrate. Uh, I just really love centipedes. I love the look of centipedes. I think they look super awesome. Um, which does mean I don't love tarantulas and, and other inverts and hell, I really do. I, I just got a bunch of new inverts when I went to the um, show. I was at the Western Invert Show in the UK, in Bristol, and I couldn't resist, you know, buying a bunch of stuff. So I got a tarantula, and I got a mantis, I got a, a, like a dead leaf mantis, it looks really cool. Still a baby, um, but it looks really cool. Um, I got like a little baby desert scorpion from the US, I can't remember the name of the species right now. It's really, really tiny, um, and I also got uh, a full-grown um, cherry red to honey. Uh, I'll be seeing some of that very, very soon. I already got some cool footage of that honey, and she's just absolutely beautiful. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen pictures already of her. Uh, she's just beautiful. Just what a beautiful animal. 
Uh, here I was experimenting with the pieces of bark and stuff. I mean, I had I sort of like pre-cut them, but sometimes I have to trim off a few bits and stuff. As you can see, I'm just using a fan brush to just, you know, level out the, um, the substrate and just, you know, using tweezers to get stuff in. Uh, I am going to be showing the rehousing of all the five um, centipedes in this video. They'll be right after this. Maybe I should have made this a little bit faster. I did make this like four times faster or something, but for this bit, it's quite a, a long process making the enclosures. That's why I only filmed one because just trying to find one, that would be no point because exactly the same thing. Um, at the time, I was using some stuff that I just gathered. Here I am just preparing a little bit more substrate. You see, I had like, basically just fill that up and I had like just a tiny layer of sand on top and just mix it up. I just think it makes it, I think it makes it easier to compact if you have just a tiny bit of sand to it. To still remain, retain humidity, I, I mostly use sphagnum moss to retain humidity anyway, so I'm not too worried about the substrate in retaining a lot of humidity. Um, and I also have the drainage layer, which will probably retain some. And, and here's the, the end result right here. Um, that's. Uh, I do apologize about the quality of the footage. I was experimenting with different cameras at the time, and this camera, granted, is not great. It's just, you know, it can get really good footage with this camera, but it's just got no autofocus, so it's, like, it's a little bit, yeah, it's not too good. But those are the five enclosures right there. Uh, I use like different, I use the stone in each one of them just to prop up the, the bit of, yeah. And now onto the rehousing. There they are in those little cling jars. They're all in there. So I'm going to be rehousing them one at a time. This was the first rehousing I've done with centipedes, uh, so I was just, uh, I was sort, sort of like the process, I was still learning. Um, so I'm basically just gonna open up the, the little cling jar and I'm gonna pull the sphagnum moss inside the enclosure and then just let it you know, get out on its own. I am sorry that my hand got right in front of the camera, but... You know, it was, this is some of the first footage I've done. No, I was still learning. Uh, and at the same time, I was I was doing this for the first time and filming for the first time. So it was a, like a double whammy right there. Um, but I think you, you're still going to see it pretty well, though, I think. It was just me. Yeah, I dropped the lid inside the enclosure. Let it go that thing. And as you see, I'm just pulling the sphagnum moss inside the enclosure and that's it she is like in the middle of that moss there uh, i drilled a few little holes i didn't show that on the video i just drilled a few holes with a drill line on top of these jars the, these are jam jars that you can just buy at a store i thought these would do for you know just baby centipedes and that's it that's one we housed um i am going to remove this sphagnum moss um eventually The only reason I put the lid on is because I was a little bit stressed. I didn't know if they were gonna like be able to jump out or not. I, I didn't know the species. Some species can almost jump out of the jar. Each eggs are actually really chilled out, so they're actually good for beginners. So she was really chilled. You know, I just started removing some of the sphagnum moss where she wasn't holding on to, and that's it, really. These are not the biggest centipedes when they grow up. They are quite big, but they're not. They're they're the Nigerian giant centipede, but they're different different genus. So they're they're etmostigmus, um, but they're still a giant centipede. They don't get as big as the honeys and, and stuff like that. But they, they still get quite big. They they still look pretty impressive, and they're definitely way more chilled out than the honeys because honeys are a bit crazy. Not as crazy as the Anonymous, though. The Anonymous are definitely making insane. Um, but those ones, I've seen them almost jump out of these. I, I keep them in the exact same type of enclosure, and I've seen those almost jumping out of it. It was just crazy. Well, I'm just getting rid of the remainder of the moss there. Just taking like little bits off. And stuff. I, I was just trying to keep the enclosures as clean as possible. 
Um, but you know, it was a process here. I was still learning to, you know, if I would have been doing this now, I probably would have just left this magnum moss in there and, and that's it. But. Try to give her a little shake there to see if she would leave this fagging moss alone, but she just kept holding on to it, I think. Now she's gone underneath um, the piece of bark, I think. And here I was ready with my lid and thinking that she's gonna jump out. But e tricks, you know, if in a setup like this, they're not gonna, they're not gonna come out. They're actually really chilled. There you go. That's. Uh, that that was the last of this one. I'm just gonna get rid of the rest of the moss. She went underneath the, the bark and all that. Uh, they were all, as far as I can see, the heat trigs are all pretty happy with their enclosures. And this was after, yeah, I just, just removed the rest of the moss. Really, I mean, yeah, I didn't. I think I cut it out when I was editing the video, but yeah, nothing special. Just made the enclosure look nice. You know, just clean it out a little bit. You know, as I was learning, I learned that, you know, using the pan brush is much better to clean the size of the enclosure than just tweezers like that. I did add spring tails to all the enclosures, you know, just because I like to keep things as hot. I don't know, I just like bioactive setups, if it's not bioactive setup. Even if it's this tiny, it doesn't matter. It can hurt to have some springtails in there. You don't want any molds, any funguses, anything like that growing in there. So, you know. There we go for the second one. There she is in there. Uh, you can't really see her very well. I know, can really focus this camera. So yeah. But uh, they do look pretty gorgeous. Uh, there's gonna be a bonus feeding video at the end of this. I'm not even sure if I got all five um, rehousings on video. I believe I do, because I'm doing the voiceover after I've edited the video and stuff. I didn't really have time to review all the video, to be perfectly honest, but I think I got the whole five on camera. Oh, there she is, there she is. Oh. Most of the times with centipedes, when you rehouse them, they just go straight under the height that you provided for them, and that's it, really. Like this one, for example, just went straight underneath the height, and I just didn't have the moss out. I did add some moss at a later time, but this one was a little bit brown. I looked like it was like dead uh, sphagnum moss, so I like to have live moss in my enclosure, so I replaced it with the live moss at a later point. I think that's probably already been shown on another one of my feeding videos. And this one is actually an interesting one because this, um, so I call this centipede blackie. The reason for this is because she's, the only reason is because I got a black stone side enclosure. Um, but she was the first one that I got on video feeding and she was definitely, she appeared to be the most nervous one of the whole 5e tricks I got. I just thought, you know, she's gonna be black, she's the nasty one. But she's cool, they're all really cool. I, mean, I, love, I love them all the same. And here we got another one. Third one, one more rehousing. And there, they do like to hide. As soon as he turned um, the jar towards the light, they just go inside the the moss. Uh, E-Triggs definitely do not like light. They're definitely nocturnal. Most of the times that they fed, right, so they'll burrow during the day. They'll stay under the hide or they'll burrow deep um, during the day and then they will come out at night time and that's when they usually feed. That's why it's kind of hard to catch the e tricks feeding. The way what I found out is that the way that you can tell if they're ready to eat is if they come out at night and they're just like hanging out, like outside um, of the hide. Um, nine times out of ten, when they display that behavior, it means that they're hungry. If they're not coming out 
um, from underneath the hide or whatever, that probably means that they're just, you know, they're not hungry, they're just chilling, and maybe they're getting ready to molt, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not 100% sure you can actually see the other one in the background, like moving around. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool, she's like testing out her enclosure. Yeah, all Santa Peas are escape artists. They're always trying to find a way. Okay, okay. I guess that's it for the, for the rehousing. And there's the really cool feeding video. I just put it there and it just got dragged in the knee. And it's like the Santa Peas just came over, just mature. And this nose nice feeding clip is actually not an e trick. It says Calapeng with the honey. Um, the, I was told at the time this was a version but I'm not sure the more I look at it the more it looks like just a normal Vietnamese giant centipede so it's kind of hard to tell because they're still babies but okay and that's it for the video thanks a lot for watching everybody uh, please leave a comment like and subscribe follow me on social media uh, check out the links for the music I use for the video I got some really cool music um, you know that I got from this really cool channel on YouTube that does copyright free music I can't actually remember the name of it right now, but it's all, all the links will be in the description. Uh, like I said, you know, please like the video, leave a comment, please subscribe to the channel. Um, social media links are also in the description. Follow me on Instagram. There's daily updates, uh, little snippets of the videos, extra content and all that will be on Instagram. I do also use Twitter and Facebook, although I'm much more active on Instagram than any of the other two. It's just you know, because when, whenever I share something on Instagram, I'll share it on Facebook and, and Twitter. But I'm mostly active on Instagram. Um, so, yeah, just check that out if you want to. Uh, if you like the video, do leave, again, do leave a like. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.